For the TTS placement technique, the endoscope is initially placed near the stenosis. A guide wire is introduced through the stenosis, along which the delivery system is then advanced. After that, a delivery system is advanced along the guide wire. Finally, the stent is deployed with adjustment of position. The guide wire delivery system and endoscope are then removed. Although gastric outlet obstruction occurs at various locations, three main types of obstruction are shown in this schema. For obstruction at the third duodenum, the stent can be placed almost straight. The stent also can be placed in the same manner for pyloric obstruction. Here is an example of pyloric obstruction. This case patient is an 89-year-old male with unresectable gastric cancer. Initially, a biliary guide wire is introduced across the stenosis. Accurate assessment of the length of the stricture is the key to successful placement of the self-expandable metal stents, SEMS. The X-ray tube of the C-arm should therefore be appropriately rotated so that a side view of the stenosis can be obtained. A stent of optimal length is then selected based on the length of the stenosis. The delivery system is then passed through the stenosis. The stent is gradually released. The position of the delivery system should be adjusted during the stent deployment. Appropriate rotation of the X-ray tube facilitates accurate assessment of the length and positions of the stenosis and the stent. The stent is fully deployed. The stent has now been successfully placed almost straight. So how should the stent be placed when the obstruction occurs at the second duodenum? This case is a 70-year-old male with stenosis at the second duodenum distal to the ampulla. If the stent is placed such that the center of the stent is located at the stenotic position, the stent tends to bridge the flexion, such as inferior duodenal angle. When the stent would be placed like this, however, it is likely to become unconformable to the anatomy over time. For such cases, the proximal stent end should be located in the gastric antrum. Let me show you our procedure in this case. Here you see the stenotic part of the duodenum. Initially, a guide wire is introduced with the aid of ERCP catheter. Contrast medium is then injected via the ERCP catheter. Sufficient injection is important to define the length of the stenosis. The endoscope is withdrawn to the stomach. The delivery system is then introduced through the stricture.
The outer sheath is gradually pulled to deploy the stent. The stent has been deployed. The stent was successfully placed at the optimal position. This X-ray photo taken shortly after stent placement shows that the stent has been flexed at the superior duodenal angle. This is an X-ray photo one week after stent placement. Because the proximal part of the stent was held by the pylorus, it has remained flexed at the SDA.